What's up guys, this is Adam from 3dmodelsworld.com and welcome to another Maya tutorial and today we're gonna create a puddle effect and also a wet surface effect. We're gonna be using pretty simple approach and it's not very complicated to do but it can give you pretty good results and uh, really fast also to render. So without further delay, let's get started. Okay, so before we get started, I just wanna show you guys this uh, quick uh, reference I have. So this way we can talk about what the effect we're trying to achieve to simulate in Maya. So as you can see here, this ground is uh, wet and there's some parts of it is dry. And for the wet ground, you can see that there is uh, a high reflection and also the material is darker so that dry parts you can see here is uh, it's light the material is light is not dark and also doesn't reflect as much and for the wet parts like this area here is very reflective and also the color is dark so that's basically the two main things we need to simulate in this tutorial we're gonna have like the wet areas are dark and reflective and the dry areas is normal color and not as reflective okay so let's go to Maya so this is the scene I have, uh, it's pretty simple, you can see this is the ground plane and I have a sky and uh, a directional light for the shadows. Okay, and this is the camera view. So if you render right now, so this is what we got when we render. It's basically, it's the basic colors. So let's create the material for the ground. First, let's go select the ground and right click and assign new material. And then let's click on Arnold and let's select AI standard service. Yeah, and then let's name it. Okay, so there's a few things here we need to adjust first. Let's uh, assign the texture for our material. So let's go to the hyper shade. I already have the textures here, so first this is the fuse map and we're gonna apply a normal map as well but for the normal let's change the color space from srgb to raw because we don't want the color information to be changed okay now everything here is good and let's go back to the materials ground and let's take the file of the diffuse and add it to the color and then let's scroll down the geometry and then let's select the normal map and apply it to the bump and let's go to the settings it's repeating three times that's good and let's change it from bump to tangent space normals and you can actually tone it down so let's look here and then let's tone it down maybe 0 0.5 okay so now we have the basic shader already created let's go back to the material click on it and click on the connections so you can see everything okay that's good now if we render okay so it's done rendering and you can see now since we have the specular all the way up uh, so it's getting a pretty reflective material and that's fine we don't need to change the settings right now because we're gonna be using uh, a different way to adjust the uh, specular here so we can keep everything as it is i just wanted to show you what it looks like right now and uh, i just want to mention that the way we're gonna create this uh, wet shader for the puddles it's gonna be one way of doing this it's not the only way there's i'm sure multiple ways you can do this but this way is pretty fast and you can get really nice uh, results in order to create the wet parts and then the dry parts in our image we need to create like a mask and apply this mask to our specular and then also to our diffuse and then have this mask basically adjust the reflections and uh, how dark the material is based on this mask settings so this way we can uh, always change it and adjust it very easily so let's close uh, this render and to create this mask let's go to the 2d textures and let's create uh, noise okay so this is the noise we have we basically need to create like the puddles here and we just want to make it uh, you know a kind of big difference between the black areas and the white areas now it's kind of like mixed and it's going to be hard to see the results okay so let's change some settings here let's change the ratio all the way to zero so you can see we can start to get really uh, big difference here 
and let's change the frequency to 1 and then here we can change the frequency uh, from 8 the higher the frequency the smaller you know these like white areas and we want them to be big because that's what's gonna affect how reflection but we don't want it to be too big like that so maybe like 10.4 would be good and then let's scroll down of course you can animate these if you want so for the density you can like change it to become less or more but let's keep it at one and then uh, let's change the size random from zero to just like just a little bit like that you know so this way we don't get all the circles all the same like so they are different sizes to them you can change this randomness it's pretty interesting effect it makes everything it looks super like organized but this is good so I like this one we can use this one for now and then we can always tweak it to get the result we want in order to connect it correctly to our shader let's select it and let's figure out which attributes we need to be connecting the noise to so the first attribute we want to look at is the specular and we want to connect it to the specular weight so this is basically how much spec gonna be applied so zero will be like completely non-reflective and one is gonna be very reflective so we want this noise we just created to be applied into this specular also we need to connect the noise texture to the diffuse roughness and this is gonna help apply some roughness on the material and gonna help us blend uh, nicely and have a nice uh, subtle effects gonna be on our uh, shader so those two attributes we're gonna be basically applying this uh, a noise texture we just created to affect so let's start with the specular so first let's select the out alpha and let's put it into the specular and as you can see immediately here it's updated with all with all that uh, shiny parts and the non shiny parts okay and then the next thing let's render actually and see what it looks like so this is what we had before let's save this image and let's render okay so you can see the difference now we already have uh, some parts have uh, like wet already looks like and other parts looks more dry but let's enhance this uh, you know um, contrast between them and make it more uh, noticeable and let's uh, also take this out alpha and then plug it into the diffuse roughness Okay, let's click on the material make sure everything is connected let's go back let's save this image and render okay it's done rendering and you can see the difference it's uh, let's make it blend better and also make the dry areas more noticeable and also I really like how it blends between the dry areas and the wet areas as well so it's kind of nice effect and always we can also apply similar to the weight of the diffuse because the weight diffuse also is responsible for how bright it is and now it was a default 0 0.8 and we can increase it to 1 and uh, let's render and see what we got you can see also the effect uh, effect and helps uh, brighten things up in general so that's uh, good okay so let's go back to this noise and then we can let's try experiment with different uh, noise types so now it's let's change it to parallel noise and let's see what kind of effect we got so you can see already here let's render and see what we got okay so it's done so now you see it's not as noticeable as this one but with changing the settings, if we keep changing the settings on the noise and adjusting it, we would be able to get uh, something similar to this. Uh, the one downside to this uh, like noise that we applied using the below type is you can see the circles are too perfect. And that's kind of like, you know, make it more look like CG. This looks more natural once you start to get the settings to work uh, correctly. You're gonna get a more natural result but this is how you guys you can do this uh, effect by just basically creating uh, this kind of mask and then applying it to the specular uh, and also applying it to that um, diffuse as well so this way you can have the material have wet parts and then dry parts hopefully this tutorial help you guys let me know if you have any questions and please subscribe for more future videos feel free to check our website 3 for more tutorials and cool 3d assets until next time take care